ZRS, Cyber Research Systems, present a preview of our upcoming product line. Some story elements just don't make it to the silver screen. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 plot points that were cut out of movies. This is where the rich stuff's buried. Come on, guys, we can go in there, we can get the rich stuff. Juggler. For this list, we'll be looking at plot details that were entirely absent from a movie's theatrical cut. You ever see them? Would you lower your voice? People are mourning here. Holy shit, there they are, come on. Fine, just whatever you do, don't embarrass me. From character revelations to drastic plot turns. Proceed. Number 10. The last dream would have been real, Brazil. Hollywood's not exactly known for being entirely cooperative, but sometimes things can get dicey. Take the production of Terry Gilliam's landmark satirical film Brazil, which was infamous for the disputes Gilliam had with U.S. distributor Universal Pictures. <sighs> Thank God for that. <laughs> Universal's then-president and COO Sid Sheinberg wanted the film to have a happy ending, involving the lead character Sam escaping with his lover Jill. However, Gilliam persisted in his resistance to Universal's wishes, and the film's intended bleak ending was maintained after the studio agreed to release a director-supervised modified version. He's got away from us, Jack. Afraid you're right, Mr. Heltman. He's gone. Number 9. Explaining the T-800, Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Cyberdyne. It's ancient history. At long last, one clearly vital question would have been answered. Why does the Terminator look like an Austrian bodybuilder? In this third installment of the Terminator series, a scene was filmed explaining why the titular human-killing machine looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I was honored to be selected by CRS in the ongoing effort to save American lives. I don't know about that accent. We can fix it. It turns out that Chief Master Sergeant William Candy, played by Schwarzenegger, had his face scanned and eventually used for future projects, alongside the deep voice of a corporate executive. While the reason the scene was cut isn't known, we sense it would have raised too many questions and was just too laughably bad and just plain silly. Ooh, it's me. Number eight. Exit Pride, enter Rogue, X-Men, Days of Future Past. I'm Rogue. Apparently, removing entire subplots is a valid option to consider, if this is to be believed. Simon Kinberg, the writer of Days of Future Past, stated that the popular mutant Rogue was meant to have a larger role in the proceedings. Well, that's the point, stupid. Otherwise, it wouldn't be an adventure. Early drafts of the script allegedly had Rogue intervening in the scene where fellow mutant Kitty Pride is stabbed by Wolverine. Whatever you've done will take hold and become history. And for the rest of us, it'll be the only history that we know. It'll be like the last 50 years never happened. Rogue would use her power-borrowing ability on Kitty, taking over the task of keeping Wolverine in the past. What if I need to get a little rocky? Think peaceful thoughts? Peaceful thoughts. You have any good news? Alas, it was not to be. Kinberg and company felt Rogue was unnecessary and modified the script accordingly. Too late, assholes. Fortunately, the over 15 minutes of unused footage that was shot with Rogue would later appear in an alternate version of the film, released as The Rogue Cut in 2015. I've seen it. Number 7. A blind but voiced monster, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Even in the early years of cinema, key details could get lost on the way to opening night. Difficult to believe, my good man. See that scar? That's where I was bitten by a wolf. Such was the case for this 1943 monster mashup. The original intent was for the film's version of Frankenstein's monster to speak and to be blind. <laughs> However, when a test audience reacted negatively to the monster being voiced by Hungarian-born actor Bela Lugosi, the studio and filmmakers elected to simply cut most of the monster's scenes. 
which meant context for the beast's blind actions was also lost. There was a wild animal around here a few years ago. It killed people. Number six, Attack of the Octopus, The Goonies. Stop it now! What? Come on! I said stop it! Once in a blue moon, truly weird ideas almost find their way into films. In the case of The Goonies, such an idea came in the form of an octopus. What happened out there? Were your lives in danger? The octopus was very scary. Oh, no. Yeah, octopus. it was very dangerous. The scariest yeah. thing was walking the plank. Offhandedly mentioned at the end of the film, this aquatic creature was originally supposed to attack the titular kids near One-Eyed Willie's lost ship. The octopus would harass group members Mouth and Steph before Kid Genius Data intervened with a Walkman cassette player. For unspecified reasons, the entire scene was removed from the film proper. Number 5. Nick Getting Eaten, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I shrunk the kids. What? And the Thompson kids, too. They're about this big. They're in the backyard. It's probably a good thing that this plot point didn't see the light of day. While the final cut of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids gave everyone involved a happy ending, one potential alternate ending would have taken the story in a darker direction. <laughs> to the Thompsons and the Zelinskis, and many more dinners together. Cheers. Uh, we're gonna be having leftovers. In the scene where Rick Moranis' character Wayne is eating cereal that his shrunken son Nick has fallen into, the intent was to have Wayne unintentionally eat Nick. We suspect this may have been too grim for the filmmakers to consider. Just gotta keep our eyes open. Cheerios, the one with oat bran. Number four, Dante's End, Clerks. For such a classic film, Kevin Smith's first outing might have ended on an absolute downer. It ends on such a down note. I mean, that's what life is, a series of down endings. An extended final scene was filmed, showing the main character Dante being fatally shot by a robber. Smith's thinking was that his film, being stylized in the vein of independent films, should include the death of a vital character in its climax. I'm as puzzled as you. I've actually seen it before. In the end, though, Smith took the advice of his mentors and cut out the character's death. Though this tragic version of the film does appear as a special feature on the 10th anniversary special edition called Clerks X. Dad, keep cracking wise. That's why you're jockeying to register in some f***ing local convenience store instead of working on a steady job. Number three, no escape for Cooper, Interstellar. Our three prospects are at the edge of what might sustain human life. Talk about narrowly avoiding a depressing outcome. We must confront the reality of interstellar travel. We must reach far beyond our own lifespans. At the climax of 2014's Interstellar, lone astronaut Cooper enters a black hole and emerges in fifth dimensional space. Cooper attempts to send vital data to his daughter on Earth and exit through the wormhole. But in the original draft of the script, the story ended with the hole collapsing. I, uh, because the bulk beams are closing the Tesseract. According to writer Jonathan Nolan, the intent was to have Cooper sacrifice himself without knowing if the data got through in time. What happens now? Number two, the machinations of Ricky's father, American Beauty. One character's demise might have been the springboard for another character's suffering. After murdering Lester Burnham, the homophobic Colonel Fitz would have set out to ensure his own survival. It's said that a further 30 minutes of film was planned and partially filmed, detailing the Colonel's framing of his son Ricky and Lester's daughter Jane for Lester's murder, using Ricky's video recordings as evidence of their guilt. Since director Sam Mendes felt this plot development would hurt the film, we may never know how it would have played out. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. That guy. Yeah.
Number one, Star Killer and the Lars Family, the Star Wars franchise. Luke, Luke. All right, I'll be right there, Aunt Peru. I'm sorry, sir, but he appears to have picked up a slight flutter. It's amazing at times that George Lucas's original groundbreaking Star Wars trilogy succeeded as it did considering the numerous script rewrites. I don't believe it! Hey, how are you? Great. How'd you get it? Hey, you coming up with I'll this? be right up there with you, and if I got stories to tell you... Throughout the writing of Episode Four script, for instance, Lucas was fixated on two names, Starkiller and Lars. I'll never join you! Originally starting with the name Anakin Starkiller, which became Luke Starkiller and then finally settling on Luke Skywalker. The movie's hero also evolved from being a retired general to a teenage boy. I am ready. I, ben, I, I can be a Jedi. Ben, tell him I'm ready. Meanwhile, Oban and Baru Lars were supposed to have children of their own, and those children were supposed to be the main focus of the movie. In the end, the original script for Star Wars was divided into three parts and reworked creating the Star Wars trilogy we all know and love. I'll not leave you here. I've got to save you. You already have, Luke. You were right. Do you agree with our list? What cutout plot points draw your attention? For more detail-oriented top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. <laughs> <laughs>